Deep Dive. To dive beneath the surface and into the minds and hearts of your favorite celebrities and pop culture icons. Welcome to Up and Adam. Hey guys, what's up? You're watching Up and Adam. My name's Adam Newell. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm the guy bringing you guys the weekly interviews from your favorite celebrities and pop culture influencers. But for those of you who do know me, you know that that's not why we're always here. In fact, today is one of those days. Today we're here to go over the top five friend of a friend on Bravo. So I like to do a top five every week and you guessed it, it's that time of week again. So before we jump in, you know how this works. Make sure you like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and most importantly, wherever that button is below, make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss future recaps, interviews, or anything pop culture. But enough about me guys, without further ado, let's jump right into the top five friend of a friend on Bravo. Friend of a friend on Bravo number one. This is actually kind of fun for me to do because some of these people, whew. Guys, friend of a friend number one goes to Kim D. We know Kim D from the Real Housewives of New Jersey and if you've seen it, then you know that she likes to get her hands dirty with the drama. So Kim D is the owner of a fashion store called Posh and on the Housewives franchise, we see her do her annual Posh fashion show. But it seems like everything always goes wrong at these fashion shows. Um, do you guys remember when Jacqueline's daughter Ashley yanked Daniel Staub by the back of the head? And we've also had other things happen too. Kim is accused one of the other housewives, Melissa Gorga, of being a stripper. She also said that Teresa was cheating on her husband while she was in jail. So it seems like Kim is always putting her hand in the pot and she likes to get a little bit dirty with the other housewives. Um, I'm interested in why they never made her a housewife. I bet you it's probably because the housewives didn't want to film with her because she's unpredictable. Almost similar to why they got rid of Brandi Glenville from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So see how this works is if you want to be a part of the franchise, you need at least one person who's willing to film with you. And if you are putting your hands and stirring up everybody's life, nobody's probably going to want to film with you. But honestly, who cares about that? When Kim D's out here winning awards, that's right, guys, the biggest supporting agitator award at the Real Housewife Awards in 2014. And I know that's not a Grammy or an Oscar to take home, but I'm sure she's proud of it. As much work as she put in and stirring up everybody's lives, I'm sure that she's A-OK -okay with that award. So since Kim has brought so much joy to our lives and given us so much to watch and so much content to keep us happy, especially during this pandemic, let's go show her and her fashion store some love at Kim D P O S C H E Kim D Posh on Instagram. So go say hello and um, especially you, Jolene. Jolene and Kim would get along. I know this for a fact, guys. Miss Faye Resnick. So Faye, we all know as being called the morally corrupt Faye Resnick. Um, I've actually met her and I thought she was very sweet. I don't think she's morally corrupt at all, but I know that you guys all have your own opinions. But what do we know Faye from? She's an author, she's a TV personality, and she used to be most well known for being affiliated with the OJ Simpson case. You see, Nicole Simpson was Faye's best friend. And now we actually know Faye Resnick for being best friends with Kris Jenner from Keeping Up With The Kardashians and Kyle Richards from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So obviously you guys see why we chose her as number two friend of a friend for Bravo because she's a friend of every celebrity who's relevant. Faye Resnick is also an interior designer and we get to see her make cameos on these different shows like on Keeping Up With The Kardashians when she tries to help decorate Rob Kardashian's house and Kris Jenner was Super excited about it, you know? But Kourtney Kardashian walks in and she's like, what is going on in here? The vibe is off. Starts completely taking down everything and insulting Faye Resnick. But we've also seen her on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills when we see her at Lisa Vanderpump's party. And I don't know if you guys remember, but she went in on Brandy Glanville. She's notorious for kind of coming in when the conflict is hot and making sure she's in the middle and addressing it if she needs to. That's Faye Resnick for you. And I think she told Brandy Glanville to be a lady or act classy and something about somebody else's Chanel or something. I don't know, but Faye Resnick is nobody to play with because she has the connections and she has the wit. So that's why, like I said, she makes a great number two on our list of friend of a friend on Bravo. Number three, Elise Slane. I actually really love Elise. Um, so we see Elise on Real Housewives of New York, especially this season, season 12 of the Real Housewives of New York City. And she's great. We see her slowly get introduced and her story is kind of funny because she was brought in as kind of an accident one night when she went out to go meet Ramona when Ramona was filming. So producers went ahead and mic'd her up and liked what she brought to the table. So they kept inviting her back, I guess. 
Um, so Ramona brought her in to keep coming back. And then eventually Ramona and Elise got into a fight. And I think once Ramona is done with you, she's done with you kind of pushing Elise off to the side. But as we see the season go on, we're starting to get to know a little bit more and more about Elise. And I'm loving every minute of it. She's sticking up for herself. We get to see her alter ego, Erica. And she's starting to have fun with the ladies and kind of develop her own stance. You know, Ramona was a little harsh with her saying, you need to go out there and be friends and make your own relationships, whatever the case is. And sure, she's right. I don't like the delivery that she gave her, but I think that Elise is doing that. Do you guys think that Elise is gonna come back as a housewife in the future? I don't know, I actually asked her and you guys can check out that interview on my channel with Elise. And I said, hey Elise, do you think that you would ever come back as a full-time housewife? And she said she doesn't know if she's crazy enough. And I think that's okay. You know, it does take a, an element of eccentric, kind of chaotic behavior to be a housewife, right? So if she doesn't wanna be, she still has a great background. Actually, her background's amazing. She comes from Wall Street. She's one of the first women on Wall Street. And she said she might eventually write a book about it, um, about all of the kind of ins and outs and what she went through being a woman on Wall Street. But you also might know her from two of her really famous lawsuits, and I'm not gonna bring those up because that's a thing from the past. But she's lived a crazy life, and I think you guys should really check her out because she has a lot to offer, and she has a great personality. She's comical, she gives back, she's a philanthropist, and she really does her due diligence. I'm talking about a powerhouse woman here. So if you guys haven't already, make sure you check her out on Instagram, at Elise Lane. Be careful, Elise, Jolene's coming for you. Oh yeah, and if you want to check out the not morally corrupt Faye Resnick, make sure you check her out on Instagram at Faye Resnick. Guys, number four, a friend of a friend on Bravo, this is Brandon D. Shazer. That's right, Brandon D. Shay. And you guys might remember him from Real Housewives of Atlanta when he kind of totes around with Kenya Moore all the time. And, and I remember him most from that iconic fight with Apollo. Do you guys remember Phaedra's husband, Apollo? That's right, at that little kind of, it was like a pillow party, a dress up party, sexy lingerie party that Nini was holding and things went down. So that's what I remember him most for, but he's more than that. Actually, he's an actor, he's a producer. Um, I guess he was a model. This is what his Instagram says, I don't know. But regardless, Kenya toted him around all the time. So that's how we remember him. And I had to give him a little bit of love on here and give him number four. Who knows what Brandon Deshay is up to now? I sure don't. So if you guys know, make sure you comment below, let us know at him. And if you haven't added him already, make sure you go on Instagram and add him at Brandon Deshay. I'm sure that Brandon would be so excited to get love from you guys, to hear from you guys, and for you guys to catch up with him and remember him from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And who knows, maybe even one day on our Talk Bravo Tuesdays, we'll bring him on a live and have him talk Bravo with us. Let's move on to number five, friend of a friend on Bravo. Number five, we're taking it all the way back to Real Housewives of New Jersey. That's right. There's two Kims that like to stir up drama in New Jersey. And I can't forget Kim G, Kim Granitow. Kim G, do you guys remember her? Because I sure do. She used to stir the pot like no other. She played both sides of the fence. Here's the fence, here's Kim, and here's Kim. And I mean, both of these are Kim G. Do you remember because she was hand in hand, like Jacqueline said, like a busted up sex in the city when she went with Danielle Staub to the courthouse, when Danielle Staub was pressing charges on Jacqueline's daughter, Ashley. That was at the iconic Posh show from the other Kim where Ashley pulled Danielle's hair. I believe I said that earlier. Pay attention, guys. Oh, actually, do you remember? Danielle said there was two things in the book. Pay attention. And Teresa was like, I am paying attention. And then I think that's when she was like, prostitution whore, something like that. Anyways, guys, see, Kim G get you going. Uh, Kim G liked to play both sides of the fence and all of the women used to call her an old lady. But I looked her up and she has an impressive net worth of $20 million. And she used to claim that Danielle used to use her all the time for her driver, which I could see that. But then when she came to the reunion, which I thought she looked amazing at the reunion, um, she came to the reunion and she was in seasons two and three. But when she came to the reunion, Danielle said, you use me too because you wanted a storyline on the show. And that's when Kim was like, I didn't use you, you nasty square boo, blah, blah, blah. And that wasn't too nice, Kim G. I think you hit a little bit too low below the belt. And that's probably why you're not on the show anymore. But we do love you. And I'm interested to see what Kim's doing. I looked up Kim G to see if I could find her on Twitter. And you can at Kim Granitel. Um, I'm going to put the handle right here somewhere on the screen. And I looked her up on Instagram, but I couldn't find her. But if you guys know what Kim's up to, you know what I said. Um, make sure that you comment in here. Comment below. Like this video. Share this video. But comment below and let us know what our top five friend of a friend of Bravo 
what they're up to because you know guys we're interested and with that being said guys thank you again so much for watching this video don't forget this tuesday july 21st at 6 p.m pacific standard time we are going live we're going to talk all things bravo so you can call in you can have a glass of champagne with me let's discuss bravo let's talk whatever crap you want to bring up any topic behind the scenes before the scenes above the scenes whatever you want we'll talk about it and most importantly jolene will be waiting for you so call in bye jolene Thanks for watching. Up and Adam.